Hello and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist and this is Cindy Oliver and she's a dog. So a number of people have alerted me to the fact that Dr. John Campbell has made another three videos about excess deaths. They're called International Excess Deaths, Young Excess Deaths and Heart Deaths in Australia. And they use John's tried and tested nudge, nudge, wink, wink technique of suggesting that they are caused by some new pharmaceutical intervention, which, of course, he doesn't mention by name so he can continue to profit from misinformation. Let's have a look. We'll start with the one on international excess deaths. Deaths around the world remain high. They were throughout 2022, and this is continuing into 2023. In the United Kingdom, for example, the last week that we have full records for it was 9.4% above the five-year average. What is going on here? And it's an international phenomenon. And um, let's just look at some of the data first of all. So this is from our world in data. Now, what we're looking at here is this is, this is basically 2022 into 2023. And we can see that that's zero. So that's where we would expect um, the lines to be. Uh, but we've noticed for these countries, New Zealand, South Korea, Hong Kong, Canada, United Kingdom, Australia, Germany, Netherlands, United States, France and Denmark, they are all well above the line. Deaths in all these countries throughout 2022 and 2023, for the most part, and the average is certainly way above Yes, you got the, the odd one dipping below for a period of time, but the average is well above. Now, let's just break that down into uh, individual countries and we'll see that this is a real international trend. You know, it's a pity we don't have an organisation that's responsible for global health, because if they did, they'd be absolutely bouncing up and down about this and saying, what is killing our people? Let's get to the bottom of this. It, it, it's just gone on for too long. It, it, it really has. We're, been, we're hoping it's been going down, but it hasn't. Well, most health organisations don't need to jump up and down and ask what's killing our people because they already know. It's called a pandemic and it's well known that pandemics cause excess mortality. This paper was published in 1932, which was before vaccines were available for influenza and it looked at a number of epidemics over a period of 15 years. And what the author found was that in every case, the excess mortality from all causes was appreciably higher than the excess mortality credited to influenza and pneumonia. And we are, of course, seeing exactly the same thing with the COVID-19 pandemic. This chart shows excess deaths versus confirmed COVID deaths for the period before the widespread introduction of vaccines. And what you can see is that as the pandemic gains momentum, excess deaths start to exceed COVID deaths and then accelerate. Sadly, exactly what you would expect to happen in a pandemic. And we also know from a number of studies that COVID doesn't just increase your risk of dying in the short term your mortality risk is also increased over the long term. For example, in this study here, between 21 days to 18 months after SARS-CoV-2 infection, there was five times greater incidence of all-cause mortality compared with contemporary controls and 4.5 times greater compared with historical controls. You know, because this is happening to all of these countries all at the same time, you would suspect that there might be a common cause of this. Why isn't there research being done on this? Why hasn't this been publicised on mainstream media? Why isn't there an organisation for world health that's investigating this and saying, just a minute, what is killing our people? Absolutely incredible. Um, I wish we could discuss more. I really do wish we could discuss more. Now, John claims we are seeing the same thing in all countries. But if you look at the cumulative excess deaths since the start of the pandemic, you can see it is not the same. This chart shows cu cumulative deaths from all causes 
compared with projections based on previous years for United States, United Kingdom, Netherlands, Germany, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. And the reason that I have chosen those seven countries is because they are my top seven countries in terms of viewership. Now, if you look at the United States, United Kingdom, and the Netherlands, you can see that the overall excess deaths are highest in these three countries, but they are now reduced from their peak. For Germany and Canada, overall excess deaths are lower than the top three countries, but they are slightly higher than they were earlier in the pandemic. For Australia and New Zealand, they are lower again compared with other countries, but they have increased quite a bit since earlier in the pandemic. Now, let's have a closer look at Australia and New Zealand. As you can see, both countries experienced negative excess deaths as the pandemic took hold. And the reason for this was that the various measures that were put in place to stop COVID spreading also stopped the spread of other contagious diseases, which meant we experienced reduced mortality from influenza, etc. So why are we now seeing this reverse? Well, there's two main reasons. The first is mortality displacement. The people who didn't die from, in, from influenza and other contagious diseases are now starting to die from the underlying conditions that would have made them susceptible to dying sooner. And this means that the overall death rate is now increasing. Although if you look at New Zealand, you can see that the overall excess mortality for the pandemic is currently zero. The second reason is, of course, COVID. Although both countries did a reasonable job of keeping COVID out prior to vaccination, there is now generally a let it rip strategy. So we are starting to see COVID mortality in both countries, more so in Australia though. And this is also contributing to excess mortality, both directly and indirectly. And by indirectly, I mean the impact of COVID-19 on subsequent mortality risks that I discussed previously, as well as its effects on the healthcare system leading to delays in emergency and routine care. Cindy just reminded me to point out that although we are now starting to see COVID mortality in Australia and New Zealand, the overall numbers are still much lower than in countries who weren't able to control COVID prior to the vaccine rollout. Just another example that vaccines do work to reduce severe disease and death. Am I missing something here? I just don't understand this. He's right. He just doesn't understand it all. Let's have a look at the second video called Young Excess Deaths and see if maybe he understands after looking at some more data. But when we break this down into age groups, these are persons 0 to 24. Now, it's a pity they don't break it down more than this. We don't have data where we don't have data. This is just 0 to 24. It will be very interesting to see the differences in children, but this is what we have. But tragically, in this younger age group, we do see uh, an increase in deaths throughout 2022 again. Um, the times where there's an excess of deaths are much more frequent than the times where there's less than average deaths. Now, you may have noticed that John is not showing the whole chart here. He has cut off the left-hand side. Would you like to see the whole chart? Here it is. The first thing to note is the scale. It goes from minus 40 to positive 40. So the bars represent very small positive and negative excess mortality. And this is, of course, why they don't break the figures down into more age brackets. The figures are already very low. The second thing to note is that early in the pandemic, there was largely negative excess mortality, which balances out the higher excess mortality later on. So what's going on here? The answer can be found in the limitations of the data set, which can be downloaded from the website where you can find the charts. I will just read the second paragraph out to you. 
Disruption to the coroner's service may have resulted in delayed registrations, again affecting weekly excess estimates, although the impact of this on the cumulative figures should diminish over time. So because the data is based on when deaths are registered as opposed to when they occurred, deaths that are referred to the coroner will be underreported early in the pandemic and overreported later in the pandemic. And generally, deaths in young people are often referred to the coroner. If you look at the data as a whole, you can see that there is a small increase in excess deaths for the 0 to 24 age group over the whole pandemic. The increase is 266, which is actually less than the total number of COVID-19 related deaths in that age group, which is 292. For some age groups, however, excess mortality is higher than COVID mortality, and that is consistent with the previous data that we have discussed showing increases in all-cause all mortality following COVID. And uh, this is liver disease. Now, quite a big increase in liver disease. What could be affecting the liver? What could be going to the liver to cause uh, liver um, more deaths from liver disease? Well, as you can see, the excess deaths from cirrhosis and other liver diseases have occurred throughout the pandemic. So if there is something that people are taking that is going to the liver, it must be something that people started taking early in the pandemic. Well, we do know that a number of drugs that were repurposed for treating COVID early in the pandemic have been associated with liver issues. And we also know that the use of ivermectin for COVID is associated with liver disorders. Who was it that was promoting ivermectin again? But it's not necessarily any of these. The leading cause of cirrhosis of the liver is excessive alcohol consumption. And it takes upwards of 10 years for alcohol-related liver disease to progress from fatty liver through fibrosis to cirrhosis to liver failure. So it's just as likely that we are now seeing the effects of drinking patterns from 10 or more years ago. Or something else again. But where you'd expect to see uh, a lot more deaths, uh, lung disease, chronic respiratory disease, well, we're not slightly less deaths than normal. Some increase in 2022, but not, not a profound uh, increase where we would expect to see it, but we're not seeing it. This indicates to me that these causes of excess deaths, see, if it was COVID causing the excess deaths, we'd expect that to exacerbate lung diseases. <clears throat> and we're not seeing increase in deaths from lung diseases. So are we needing to look somewhere else other than COVID? Of course, is the question. Uh, this is um, other respiratory diseases. And again, we see far fewer deaths than we would expect from other respiratory diseases. So again, <coughs> if we're seeing lots of COVID, <coughs> lots of COVID deaths would be, or COVID sequelae deaths from lung disease, we would expect this to be higher, but it's not, it's lower. People are not dying of these other lung diseases, anything like as much as they normally do. So COVID lung infection as an explanation here basically is not holding water. And we know this from other data that a lot of these excess deaths are not COVID deaths. Now, there are actually three different categories of lung diseases included in the data set. For some reason, John showed the two smaller categories, but left out the largest lung cause of death, which is acute lung infections. And this is a chart that he left out. As you can see, acute respiratory infections are still contributing to excess mortality. Rather strange that John chose not to show this chart. It's almost like he knew that it would prove he was lying when he said people aren't dying from lung diseases. Of course, he is also wrong to claim that COVID only leads to lung diseases. It's long been established that it leads to a number of different diseases. But let's hear what else John has to say on the matter. Now, the first one is cardiovascular disease, all forms of cardiovascular disease. And we see, okay, this was high during some of the pandemic waves, as we would expect. 
but we see that more people are dying from cardiovascular disease in 2021 and throughout 2022 than we would expect. Ongoing excess deaths from cardiovascular disease, the heart and the circulatory system. This one is ischemic heart disease. Ischemic heart disease is lack of blood supply through the coronary arteries, meaning the heart muscle, the myocardium is not getting enough blood supply. So we seem to be seeing an acceleration of coronary arterial disease as expressed in excess mortality from ischemic heart disease. Now, this one here, um, this is um, excess, um, this is cerebrovascular disease. So cerebrovascular is, um, well, cerebrum is the brain, isn't it? So the blood supply to the brain, strokes and things like that. And again, um, we see that there's more, disease here this is this indicates to me that there's more disease of um, blood vessels the blood vessels supplying the brain with blood now this one is particularly interesting heart failure well particularly uh, disconcerting deaths from heart failure are greatly increased and, and in, in a minute I'm going to tell you a bit more about what this means with heart failure but we see throughout 2022 2021 in the pandemic we would expect it to some extent yes exacerbation of existing heart failure but we wouldn't expect it in 2021 and 2022 unless there was additional cause or causes. So John admits that we did see an increase in cardiovascular diseases early in the pandemic but then says we wouldn't expect to be seeing them now. What planet is he on? A large number of studies have in fact pointed out that COVID can lead to heart issues. And this recently published review article summarises the findings of the various studies. And I'll just read you the summary from the abstract. COVID-19 infection has been found to be associated with myocardial injury, which can be attributed to several pathophysiological mechanisms. These mechanisms include injury caused by hypoxia, resulting from respiratory compromise, a systemic inflammatory response triggered by the infection, and direct attack on the myocardium by the virus itself. Furthermore, the angiotensin-converting enzyme 2, ACE2 receptor, plays a crucial role in this process. Early recognition, prompt diagnosis, and a comprehensive understanding of the underlying mechanisms are essential for effectively managing and reducing mortality associated with myocardial injury in COVID-19 patients. Now, the fact that COVID affects the heart is not new information. Here's a clip from a YouTube video made in August 2020 of someone talking about an early study that showed this. Well, welcome to this video. And I want to talk about the possible longer term complications of COVID-19, the so-called sequelae, the sort of sequelae, the things that can come after the disease. Now, if this video is not for you, um, I'll just give you a brief bottom line. There's increasing evidence that patients that have recovered from COVID-19, perhaps mostly severe cases of COVID-19, but increasingly some evidence that even people that have had milder COVID-19 can be left with some residual cardiac problems afterwards, some heart problems. So John really shouldn't be surprised that we are continuing to see excess cardiac mortality. Sydney's not surprised, are you? No, she's not. And yet he acts like he just doesn't understand why we would be seeing it. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Very strange behaviour. And he continues his supposed confusion with his video entitled Heart Deaths in Australia. And this video is supposed to be based on the Australian Actuaries Institute COVID-19 Mortality Working Group's latest analysis of excess deaths. Now, a lot of the video is just more of John pointing out excess cardiac mortality, but there were a few extra things that caught my attention. Let's have a look. Of the 20,200 excess deaths in 2022, they're saying 51% were from COVID-19. But of course, we know a lot of these people had significant comorbidities and uh, were mostly elderly. 
Um, but they're saying another 15% were COVID related. So what they're actually saying here is 51% of these excess deaths were from COVID, which we could argue about. This is what, but this is what they're saying. And uh, 20, uh, 2,900, 15% were with uh, COVID rather than from COVID. Like the way that John subtly tries to suggest that the deaths from COVID may not have been caused by COVID because the people mostly had comorbidities or were elderly, et cetera. He has been trying to downplay COVID mortality like this ever since he realised how lucrative it was to appeal to anti-vaxxers. He appears to be trying to suggest that they would have died anyway and COVID is just a coincidence. Only problem with this suggestion is that we are talking about excess mortality. So obviously they wouldn't have died anyway. He also refers to the COVID-19 related mortality as deaths with COVID, when in fact the report makes it clear that these deaths are where COVID is mentioned as a contributing factor on the death certificate. Deaths where the person just happened to have COVID are referred to as incidental COVID-19 deaths. In all age groups, including the younger age groups, mortality was 5% higher than would be expected. Now, of course, the numbers are smaller, thankfully, in the younger age groups, but there was excess mortality in all age groups. Now, they don't break down the age groups specifically, unfortunately. That would be very interesting if they did that, but they're saying it was higher in all age categories, indicating that there's other factors than the pandemic going on here because we know that COVID very rarely, thankfully, kills young people. Contrary to John's claim, the report does break down the excess deaths by age group. Here are the charts here. The yellow bars show COVID deaths and the blue bars show non-COVID excess deaths. And as you can see, COVID contributes to the excess deaths for all age groups. Uh, deaths from respiratory disease have been significantly lower than expected. Now, um, this is consistent with what we were seeing in the uh, United Kingdom as well, that we would expect more deaths from respiratory disease because COVID is primarily a respiratory infection, but they're not seeing those. In the UK, they were lower than we would expect. And in Australia, the actuaries are saying deaths from respiratory disease have been significantly lower than expected throughout the pandemic. Just like John deliberately left out one of the categories of respiratory diseases when he showed the English figures, here he is failing to mention that COVID is classified as separate from respiratory diseases in the report. There we see confirmatory data uh, from Australia, not from government sources, but from the Society of Actuaries, confirming the increase in heart disease deaths and the overall numbers of deaths. Now, the Society of Actuaries in Australia are saying that this is not related to pharmaceutical interventions. They are saying that, uh, but they're also saying they don't know uh, what the causes are. So I think uh, we can conclude that they don't really know what these causes are. So John is claiming that the actuaries don't know what is causing the excess mortality. Whilst this is strictly true, it is highly misleading. In fact, the report has a whole section on the likely causes that John inexplicably has chosen not to show. So I will take you through it. Firstly, it summarises the evidence from earlier section. So we'll just go through that because that is really relevant to the bit that comes next. COVID-19 related deaths follow the same pattern as deaths from COVID-19 in 2022. Non-COVID-19 excess deaths have been highest when there have been peaks in COVID-19 deaths and peaks in influenza deaths. Deaths due to some causes in brackets, dementia and other diseases in particular are closely correlated to the level of respiratory disease, including COVID-19 circulating. Non-COVID-19 excess deaths are particularly apparent in the oldest two age groups for both genders and the youngest two age groups for females only. Non-COVID-19 excess deaths are less apparent when there is 
no or little COVID-19 circulating, as illustrated by the difference between WA and the other states in early 2022. Based on these observations, they provided a list of factors that they thought were likely to be having a greater or lesser impact on Australian excess mortality in 2022. I'll just read out the top three for you. Post-COVID-19 sequelae or interactions with other causes of death. Studies have shown that COVID-19 is associated with higher subsequent mortality risk from heart disease and other causes, but certifying doctors would generally not identify a causative link several months after recovery from COVID-19. Therefore, it seems likely that there would be more of these deaths than identified. The age-based analysis supports this hypothesis, with non-COVID-19 excess deaths occurring in 2022, even in those under 45, noting that this age group has had low levels of COVID-19 deaths. The absence of excess deaths in WA in January also supports this explanation. Likely impact in Australia, high. The next one, delay in emergency care. Pressure on the health, hospital and aged care systems, including ambulance ramping and bed block, could lead to people not getting the care they require, either as they avoid seeking help or their care is not as timely as it might have been in pre-pandemic times. The peaks in non-COVID-19 excess deaths at times of high COVID-19 and or influenza deaths supports this hypothesis. Likely impact in Australia, high during COVID-19 and influenza peaks. And the third one is mortality displacement. Australia had high negative mortality displacement, i.e. fewer deaths than expected, in the first year or so of the pandemic, resulting from the absence of many respiratory diseases. The lower than expected mortality from respiratory disease was again apparent in 2021. As such, some of the excess we have seen in some causes in 2021 and 2022 may be the reversing of this effect. People who otherwise may have died earlier had their systems been stressed by respiratory disease may now be succumbing to their underlying illnesses. Conversely, the earlier than usual flu season in 2022 appears to have resulted in some forward mortality displacement. Likely impact in Australia, moderate, likely to reduce over time. If John was genuinely interested in educating his audience on the causes of excess mortality that we are now seeing, he would have included this information, but he didn't. I would like everyone to know, so I have included it. And if you'd like to look further into the data I've presented, I provide links in the video's description. And please remember this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. Of course, if you listen to my videos all the time, you know this because I say it at the end of every video. But if you're new, just remember that. And if you've got this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked or commented on the video, double thank you because that helps the algorithm. It means that more people will see the video. And, of course, thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee or beautiful Sydney here a treat. We really appreciate your support. We will be continuing to make videos about the science in the future, so if you'd like to see them, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.